in the five o'clock hour. Connor O'Neill joins us. And again, the story, Connor, we had the story earlier in the day in our show with Sam Hartman. Uh, it, was this something that just all of a sudden today became news? Yes, absolutely. Um, you know, I practice at Wake usually starts around 745 in the morning. And so I was out there at about 740 and uh, just kind of taking my normal walk around the field before they get going. And uh, athletic communications staffer came up to me and said, like, hey, you might want to get upstairs to the observation deck and get your computer out for a eight o'clock release. So um, that's that's when it hit. And uh, it's, it's kind of been uh, a nonstop wheel uh, since then. Sam Hartman is uh, maybe, Connor, the best quarterback in, in the history of Wake Forest. Uh, so it's not like you can just replace him uh, outside of, the, you know, obviously the personal ramifications for him as he works to get back from, from this issue. What does this mean for the Demon Deacons as they're trying to win the ACC? Yeah, I mean, it's tough, right? Uh, I was just on with somebody yesterday and saying, like, it's, it's impossible to ask him to repeat what he did last year. Uh, last year, he became the third ACC quarterback to ever be responsible for 50 touchdowns in a season. Uh, the other two, when they did it, uh, Lamar Jackson won the Heisman and Deshaun Watson won the national championship. So asking that of Sam would have been a little much this year, but based on the, the firepower of that offense coming back, uh, the experience of their offensive line, it, it would not have been – out of the realm of possibility to see Sam put up similar numbers. So it's still, you know, it's, it's one position. Uh, it's the most important position in, in sports, really. But there's still the firepower there for, uh, it looks like it's going to be Mitch Griffith, a third-year quarterback out of Virginia, who takes the reins, and he's, he's going to – He's going to have all the opportunity in the world. He's going to have all the supporting cast in the world to still be successful and still kind of keep the train rolling. Uh, that, you know, Wake has played really good offensive football for most of the last five years. Imagine him he all of a sudden just bam, hey, you're the starter out of nowhere. But I bet everybody's head spinning there uh, right now, Connor, and that includes Dave Clausen's. Uh, I, I believe you guys got to talk to him, correct? And, and what was that kind of like to, to gauge his reaction to the news? We did. Um, you know, it all played out yesterday. Like, Sam had the surgery yesterday, so it's not like he was rushed overnight and Dave was just given all the all the details before he talked to us. He kind of had some time to sleep on it and, and digest how he was going to talk to us about it. And, you know, it's it's a program that they don't, they don't really differ from many other programs across the country. They're just going to bludgeon you with the next man up cliche. And uh, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that. Like it, it clearly is a cliche because it, it works uh, more often than not. So that was kind of the tone. It was like, this is, this is really unfortunate. Um, it was, it basically sounds like it was not preventable. Uh, it sounds like this was just kind of a freak thing that was not football related uh, that could happen to, you know, Dave even said this, it, it could happen to anybody. Um, that it happened to the star quarterback was just the the cards that they were dealt. Um, so, you know, they're, Dave is not going to be one to uh, cry wolf and, and, and say woe is us and just kind of punt on the season and, you know, give us a give us some kind of line about if we go six and six, it'll be a miracle, that kind of thing. Like they're, they're still, their goals are in front of them. Um, Dave was really encouraged by the practice that they did have. Uh, so they're, they're going to keep trying to chug along. So they do think this is definitely, or not definitely, but probably going to be an all, all year thing. That's the thing that's, that's really strange. Dave, uh, several times in the seven plus minutes that we talked to him said, Sam will be back, uh, mm -hmm. some version of, of he'll be back. And he maybe I'm getting hung up on the minutia here, but he never said this year. Like it, it, it never, you know, the, the timeline, I think it's just so new. I think I, I genuinely think that nobody has a, a real grasp on, on the timeline of this thing. Um, I think it probably depends on how Sam's body reacts to whatever treatment and whatever rehab he's going to go through over the next 
however many uh, days, weeks, and, and if we get into months, um, it'll just depend on, you know, the, the body's science. How important was it for him to be there where his teammates could see him and know that he's okay and that, that he's trying to move on? It was huge. Um, Sam has had that effect for, for a while on this team. Um, even going back to his freshman year in 2018, uh, he broke a bone in his foot and was out. And uh, they won a huge road game in the first game that he missed uh, at NC State. And when team buses rolled back in that night, Sam was there to greet the team buses. This is like, you know, two or three in the morning and Sam is out there on crutches. He's always been, he, he is, he is a big time Wake fan. I think if Sam was not a college football player at Wake Forest, he would be a football, uh, a Wake Forest football fan. Uh, he loves the school and, and he loves his teammates. And that's why, I mean, he's, this is his third season as a captain. And I think in Dave Clawson's nine, this is going to be his ninth season. I think Dave has had one other third year captain. Six. Go ahead. Is the defense going to be better? Like one of the things they'll probably need <laughs> is that defense to be better. The offense, you know, even with a different quarterback, I would still think they're going to score a lot of points just based on the system and the talent that they have. But is the defense going to be better to make up for maybe the couple touchdowns they won't score a game because Sam will be gone? That's kind of the the unanswered question at this point. Uh, there have been some some times in fall camp so far that you look out there and, and you really see a difference. Um, you talk to some of the players and they'll tell you that it's a lot more of a aggressive defense. Um, they'll tell you that they're thinking a lot less, which, you know, that might sound bad depending on how you take it. But uh, I think there was some paralysis by analysis going on last year and they felt like they were a half a step slow because they were trying to read too much. Um, I think they've kind of eliminated that, but, you know, at the same time, it's it's a kind of a misconception about their defense last year. They had some games where they were not bad. I know that the I know that the season averages are terrible, but it's really it's the averages that get dragged down by four or five times that they just completely broke. And there were other games like Virginia had one of the best offenses in the ACC last year. And until mid-November, Wake had held them to, I think, more than 100 yards fewer than anybody else on Virginia's schedule had done. Uh, they, they had some good games. It was just the consistency, and it was when things went wrong, uh, they went really, really wrong, like to the tune of giving up 56 points to Army. Connor, uh, what do you think of uh, the schedule this year for Wake? I mean, VMI will be the opener, but you got, you know, at Vandy, a little SEC action. Uh, but Liberty, Clemson, I know a lot at some of these games, like Liberty and Clemson are, are both home games. But just how do you think that the schedule stacks up this year? I think, it, you know, uh, every everything perception-wise changed today yeah. uh, be, between about 8 a.m. and 8.05. <laughs> <laughs> it's really a schedule that kind of sets up for you to break in a new starting quarterback, right? Um, you're going to get a, an FCS team on a Thursday night at home. That should be no problem. Um, knock on wood. I mean, you know, FCS teams get one or two big boys every year, but I don't think that happens here. Um, at Vandy is a game that, you know, with a healthy Sam Hartman, I was looking at and saying, you know, the with with all of the summer realignment news, that's a game that ACC people are going to look at and say, we, we don't need Wake to just win this. We need Wake to win this by a lot yeah. uh, against the SEC doormat. Now with the new quarterback, I don't know if you say that uh, as emphatically. I think you still want him to win by a bunch. But, you know, if, if there are some growing pains with a new quarterback's first game, maybe you let some things slide. Uh, I'm really interested in what Liberty has. I mean, they were – I think eight and four, seven and five last year with an NFL quarterback. Um, that's just, that's kind of a question mark that I would need to do a little more research to figure out. And then, I mean, you jump right into it. That, that September 24th date against Clemson, that, that was the biggest game on the schedule uh, before today. That was that's the biggest game on the schedule after today. 
I don't. I'm not sure if you uh, if, if you did this or no mentioned this or not. But obviously, he had a medical procedure Tuesday night after seeking attention during the workout earlier in the day. Were you at that workout when something happened? No, that's a. It was an off day. Okay. Um, we're we're permitted to be at the practices, but that was a. Uh, okay. You know, they're in the weight room lifting and that kind of thing. And it really sucks because Wake Forest is so exciting, all the momentum and everything else. Yeah, it does. I mean, it's it's man, it's a huge blow. But uh, I mean, there's you know you're you're looking at it uh, from a, a much closer view than than we are. But yeah, on the outside looking in, I can't imagine what it's actually like if you're if you're there and you've gotten to know Sam Hartman a little bit. Just crushing news. Uh, you did briefly mention uh, the, the realignment piece as far as that Vandy game, and we talk a lot about that because the Big Twelve's kind of caught up in, in what's going on. We just talk college football. How have the folks out um, in, in your neck of the woods? Uh, you know, digested realignment and the ACC's place in it and so on and so forth. Everybody's just kind of clinging to this ACC grant of rights that extends to 2036 that basically spells out if you want to leave the ACC before 2036, you're going to owe the ACC at least nine figures. Mm -hmm. And the ACC is going to still own your media rights uh, until the end of the contract. Uh, it is, you know, I'm, I'm not a lawyer. I haven't dove into that thing, but everybody that I know uh, that has seems to think that it's pretty ironclad and uh, that's going to keep a team like Clemson or Florida State or Miami from, from jumping to the SEC unless those schools want to shell out, you know, thousands upon thousands of dollars per hour for a lawyer team, lo- uh, legal team that's going to buy them out of it. Um, so we'll see if that happens in the next, what decade or so <laughs> yeah. but um yeah it, it's kind of just it, it was really really exciting for like four or five days there was all kinds of headlines about now the ACC needs Notre Dame more than ever before and Notre Dame needs to join the ACC because of the ACC extended an olive branch to them in 2020 during the pandemic and I think that resulted in Notre Dame making the college football playoff. Um, if I'm not mistaken, I, I might be misremembering there, but, but yeah, it's, it's just kind of died down. The season ramping up has kind of given everybody a little bit of a, a breather um, with that. And, uh, you know, it's just, it's kind of wait and see mode with the grant of rights that they have. It does seem like ACC immediately was on the radar like the Pac-12 was with USC, UCLA, or the Big 12 was because you wonder about them as well. But it's kind of calmed down. There's not. There's always that, well, what about the grant of rights? And Notre Dame's even attached to a lot of that with all the non-football sports. But it does seem like any concerns about the ACC from afar have calmed down, and they're mainly just worried about playing football. Yeah, um, we – you know, we had a brief pocket of it uh, at ACC Media Day. I think that was around July 20th and 21st, so about three weeks ago. Uh, Jim Phillips was talking about it, and he presented what I thought was a strong front. Um, I don't know if it's the smartest way to go about things, but it's at least the noblest to talk about how college sports has to be about more than just one sport. Um, the ACC sponsors a ton of sports, uh, especially compared to the SEC. And the ACC has always prided itself on its academic reputation. Um, now, college sports are moving more toward a, a professional business model. So I don't know if that's going to be the correct stance to take, but it's at least a strong stance. It, it, it doesn't have to be the right one if, it, if it's strong, at least. Um so yeah, that was that was kind of the the gist of things uh, as I read them at ACC today. Connor, thank you for your time. Dakins Illustrated covers Wake Forest. Connor O'Neill's been with us before. Talked about Wake Forest and the nice run they had a year ago with the Sam Hartman Hartman news. And uh, I, you don't know. I mean, I I thought I saw there was one quote where they maybe he'll be back by the end of the year. But again, we don't know what it is, and it could be something that's going to take a while. But good luck to him moving forward that's got to be a way you're at 